I recently posted a video about the massive improvements we made to the top floor of our house. In it, you can see the transition this guard railing went through, but I didn't spend any time explaining it because there was just too much to cover. If you haven't already, go check that video out so you're all caught up and ready to see how I take this thing from an ugly half a wall to a nice modern guard railing. That ugly, ugly half a wall is gone, and I moved all the electrical that you probably saw coming out into this corner, and I just finished doing the first round of mudding on it. So this is going to take a couple more coats before I have it right, and it's going to be tied in, but now I've got my switch and my outlet that did have wires coming out floating in nothing here. Now I have to start worrying about the floor. Now the intention here is to move the hardwood all the way over to hanging over the drywall on the staircase just a little bit so that there's just going to be a little piece of trim underneath there that'll be the transition and it's going to look pretty nice and then we'll have spindles uh, balusters and a newel post at the far end and we'll have this cool open railing in here but first I got to fix the floor so I'm going to bring you in closer and show you what's going on with the hardwood and then show you how I'm going to attempt to fix it. So looking this way at the uphill side of the staircase you can see which direction the tongue and groove uh, floor slats are going. So we've got the tongue and the groove. So the tongue is pointing that way, the groove is pointing that way. So to get it out, we have to figure out where the nails are. Now they would have blind nailed most of this, and I'm assuming that they went in this direction and hid the nails inside the grooves. Now, if we come over here to this first board, which you can see is all kinds of just rough sawn, especially right there, they just sort of hacked it so it would fit in alongside the wall that we took out. So if we look really close, this very edge, they actually just nailed right straight through the top. There's a nail, there's a nail. So how do I pop this out without ruining the tongue on the other side? I took the circular saw and cut a groove in here along that edge on the other side of those nails that I can see. Now I should be able to just pry this out and have a much better idea of what I'm working with going forward. So, you can see here I cut out all the way to the end of a piece, that way I can stagger these and they don't look like I just dropped them all right in place. And this is the piece that I cut out. It came out of there, that direction. I managed to save the tongue and the groove on both sides so we're in good shape. I cut out this direction thinking that there was another nail in the middle. There was no nail in the middle. All the nails were coming in from the tongue side. So I believe I said before, I think they would come in from the groove. This is based on no research, no information whatsoever. I just thought that's where you would hide it. Clearly they put it in on the tongue side because I cut right through one. I didn't even notice. I must have a combination blade in there because it worked just fine. Cut the nail and the whole thing just came right out. So now that I know that, I can start putting strips in this whole length. So I put this first chunk in without showing you because I needed to figure it out for myself. But it went in really easily and looks pretty darn tight at both of the corners. Starting at this end, that's the longest piece. And I basically set it in down here and then took a dead blow and tapped it in until it hit hard up against that joint. And then I did the same thing on that far end. And then I cut this one in the middle to be pretty close to the exact width and then came up here and it was just a hair long. So I shaved just a little bit off again and because I had access from this side I was able to just slide it in between the two. Then I toenailed these nails in so pre-drilled at an angle and then nailed them down to hold them in place and keep them from coming this way. these staggered so they don't look like I just put in a line here. This chunk is going to end up getting covered up by the newel post so it doesn't really matter.
tape is here and I've got it marked with the locations of the nails that are in the subfloor. So I made sure I didn't put any of my new nails into those exact same locations because if you get a nail in halfway through a board and then hit the next nail, uh, you're not going any further. So now this board is not going anywhere and it looks pretty nice. Refinishing the floors will help a lot because they'll smooth out the rough spots and then all the finish will match obviously. But And then the top of the stairs is right there too. Now eventually we're going to redo the stair treads and risers. And this piece was going up behind this nosing strip and I broke it out now so that I didn't wreck this in the future. So this piece is just temporary for strength so that when you step on the edge of this it doesn't want to snap off or break off where I just put those nails in. So this will eventually come out and be replaced with a full length riser, full height riser. Now in the garage, I put this round over on starting at this corner because I knew I couldn't get all the way to the corner. Same thing with that end. I rounded over all the way up to here and quit and here and quit because I wanted to get these installed and exactly in place with each other. So now I can finish out round routing this round over in this corner and it'll match perfectly. So total height for the staircase guard rail has to be 36 or higher. I took a look at it, 36 felt low for kids running back and forth across it to me. So what we're doing is I've already cut my spindle to 38 inches. So we're a little bit taller than what code says I have to be. But then in addition, you have the rail itself is about two and three eighths inch total height. Well. Yeah, two and an eighth inch. None of these dimensions really matter to you, but here's how I'm figuring out what I'm gonna end up doing, because if you look at this, if I make this flush, this thing is ridiculously tall. It's just way, way too high to leave it exactly where it is. I mean, we're looking at 56 and a half inches total height. That's too much. What I'm trying to figure out is, I need my railing to run into the newel post right about there. If that's what I want, and I need to cut this down to that height, I'm just going to take this that's already the right height. We can ignore the stud because that's going to get stunk, sunk into the floor. Put that right about there. I realize this is not very precise, but by eyeballing things against each other, I know exactly wherever this line is. Nope. I know that this line right here is going to give me what I want out of this. So. Now I can cut 11 and a half inches off of this and get this thing to the exact height that I need it to be. The other thing I need to know for sure is that I need a flat spot 25 inches up from the bottom for the, hand, the angled handrail coming up the stairs to anchor into. So if I cut that at that mark and measure here, 25 and a half falls right in the middle of the giant flat spot. So all of our bases are covered. I can go and cut this thing and feel pretty confident that I didn't make a big mistake. <clears throat> I would like to point out, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm making this up as I go along, but making sure that it's up to code and safe. And the process that which I get there is, I don't know, we'll see what happens. And just to make sure I'm really happy about it, we'll double check square. Nice. Check 90 degrees from that. Nice. That 
bottom is perfectly square. I'm happy. Okay, so back inside and ready to set the newel post. I marked up where I want it to go, uh, and I spared you that because it was just a lot of putzing around. The one thing I will say is that right here along the center line, there's actually a double floor joist that I ran into when I was putting the new hardwood down. So right here and right here running this whole width of this hallway is a double floor joist and I want to get to that to help make this even stronger. Now the newel post uh, is hollow at the base with this solid core. The idea is you get this set in place and run screws in from all directions to get this nice and strong and then you slip this the post back down over the top of it and then run screws into it and that should make it pretty strong. Uh, I've got two growing boys that I think are going to use this thing as a boomerang to accelerate down the hallway so I want it to be even stronger than that so like I said I want to get down into the floor joist so what I need to do is drill a hole that goes down into it and I'm going to set a dowel about a one inch like old broom handle dowel into the floor joist and into the bottom of this block so that it is secured down several more inches than just right here at the surface. So to set this, I am going to put the block in and actually set it up just a little bit too high so it's not all the way down and that'll make sense in a second. I'll put the screw in to lock that thing in. Then I'm going to put just a drop, just a drop of CA glue on that side and on that side so that it can't quite touch the frame and it's not going to be able to touch that. We'll throw the accelerator on that and then with it hovering over the glue, not actually touching anything, I can line this back up exactly where I had it and that block will drop down onto my glue. There, I heard it drop. Now, since I'm not actively pushing down on it, uh, I'm going to let it sit for just a little bit longer. And then I'm going to very carefully pull this back off. And that block will be sitting exactly where it needs to be. And then we can take the next step. Perfect. Now I know that I want it right exactly on this line, so it's in the center of those two floor joists. And this direction truly doesn't matter much. I'm just going to try to get pretty centered. So, now we know where I want this hole. But since it's not centered, how do I find where I want this on here? Well, uh, with a dowel centering pin, I can go ahead and drill just a little hole. Then I can put that down in there. And then I line this back up kind of on its marks. And now I have, you can see where center is, you can see where my dowel is. So it's close to center, but it's not perfectly center. So if I had gone with center, my whole thing would be off by a little bit in this direction. And it's kind of important to get it lined up just right. So now I have this whole location and this whole location figured out. I can go start drilling stuff. That's as deep as I can go with the bits I have. that's in, it will get glued in, it will get screwed in from all directions. Right now I just need it enough in that I can start figuring out the rest of the rails. At this point I have all the holes drilled, I have kind of checked the spacing, I've made sure everything's going to be right. I did slide the newel post off of that plug and glued everything back in place. Uh, the newel post itself can still slide up and down and I think that's going to be important 
for getting the railing and all of the spindles all sorted out. Uh, in order to tie the hand railing to the two ends, to the wall and to the post, I drilled a three quarter inch hole straight down through the bottom, not all the way through, just in partially so that I could also drill an angled hole out the other side. So this way I can come in from the bottom and anchor this into the board on the wall and make it really, really strong. The issue is that how do you get, when this is only four inches apart, how do you get a drill in there to do it? Well, I don't know what the right way is, but I know what my way is gonna be. So uh, let's see if it works. How's that for confidence? think I think it's a huge improvement over the ugly old half a wall that was here before it kind of makes the space feel a little bit bigger it's definitely brighter um, maybe even a little bit wider considering we lost some thickness on that half a wall so it helped improve the space and I think it's just a good modern update to what we had before and it goes along with the rest of the top floor renovations that we did if you didn't see that video I'll give you a link to that so you can go see all the changes the drastic, drastic changes from before and after that went into this. The whole floor is now finished with the exception of the bathroom, which is gonna be coming up. Um, anyway, I didn't know anything about how to put this thing in other than I checked out codes for height and spacing on different things. Uh, and other than that, I just kind of made it up as I went along. I probably could have saved myself a little bit of headache consulting an expert or doing some research, but that's never been my style. So we got it in, it looks great, it's nice and strong. I can't think of anything else I need to say right now and you're probably trying to get me to shut up. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time. I don't know what the next project on the list is gonna be if I'm being honest. I'm finally done with the house projects for a little while so I can get back out in the shop and do something that's a little bit more enjoyable. Anyway, thanks guys. We'll see you next time.